Hey guys, so I know it's been a while since I posted my last calculus uh, tutoring video and the reason for that is just because I was busy and I didn't have the time to make these videos but I'm back just as I said on my channel and welcome to my new channel by the way uh, I'm making this for the sole purpose of tutoring um, I'm planning on starting a few new topics other than calculus, uh, physics probably um, I'm not sure about anything else at the moment, but physics will be coming soon, so I'll look forward to that. But, let's get to it. It's been a while. So, here we are. We're back at calculus, and we're going to do episode 3 today, and we're doing differentiation formulas. What do I mean by differentiation formulas? Well, for certain functions, types of functions, there are formulas that you can use to get the derivative quick and easy. You don't have to use that really long limit definition of a derivative that we talked about in the previous uh, episode, the uh, limit of f of x plus h and all that stuff. And you know, that's really tedious, but now, now we've got some formulas and we're going to go over them right now. So let's take a look at the first one. Alright, so this is the first definition and it may seem really obvious to some just by thinking of the limit definition, but to others this is not so intuitive. The derivative of a constant, meaning if we have a function f of x equals some constant, so x isn't in the equation, the derivative is always zero. And if you think about it, let's just draw a graph right here, and a function f of x equals c would just be a straight line. And we previously learned that the derivative is essentially the tangent slope of the tangent line uh, at a point to that function. And as we can see, the slope to this horizontal line will always be zero. So the derivative of constant is zero. You can use the limit definition to see this as well. So let's take a look at a few examples. For those of you who already understand this, move on. Uh, I'll put a uh, link in the description to the next part. So let's see, the derivative of three. Well, three is a constant, so it's gonna be zero. The derivative of 999, no matter how large this constant is, it's going to be 0. And the derivative of 0, 0. Because the slope of the tangent line, it will always be 0 for a horizontal line. Let's go on to the next one. So here are a few more basic rules. Um, we have the constant multiple rule. And the constant multiple rule essentially is, if you have the derivative and as the function, we have maybe like the derivative of a constant times a function. We can just bring that constant out and take the derivative of this function right here. So if you have a constant, for example, if we have the uh, derivative, if we need to find the derivative of, let's say, 3x, we can just do 3 times the derivative of x. Something like that. So our next rule is called the sum rule, and essentially what it states is that if you differentiate a sum of functions, it's equivalent to the sum of each of their derivatives. So what does that mean? We have the derivative of f of x plus g of x, and that's going to equal the derivative of f of x plus the derivative of g of x. And similarly to the sum, sum rule, we have the difference rule, and the difference rule is the derivative with respect to f, uh, sorry, the derivative with respect to x of f of x minus g of x is equivalent to the derivative with respect to x of f of x minus the derivative with respect to x of g of x. So there are three more basic rules, and now we're going to go on to a more advanced rule called the power rule. All right, so here's the second rule. This rule is called the power rule, and the reason it's called the power rule is because it deals with functions with exponents. So if we have an f of x equals sum x to the n. So some, some exponent value here, x squared, x cubed, x to the 100, it doesn't matter. The derivative of a function like that is going to be n times x to the n minus 1. So essentially what we're doing, we're bringing this n down here, and then we're subtracting this n by 1. So we're going to get n times x to the n minus 1. Let's take a look at a few examples. First one, the derivative with respect to x of x. So let's say we have some function f of x equals x. 
And what is that? That's just a line with slope 1 going through the origin. And if we use the power rule, so this would be x to the first, we would get 1 times x to the 0, which is just 1. And that makes sense because, as we know, the derivative is the slope of a, the tangent line. And since this function is just a line of slope 1, the tangent slope will clearly be 1. Now, in our second example, we have the derivative with respect to x of f of x equals x squared. And in this case, we'll bring this down, so 2, times and x to the 2 minus 1. So x to the first, which is just 2x. So the derivative with respect to x of x squared is 2x. Now let's take a look at this one. The derivative with respect to x of x to the 999th power. And it's the exact same thing. 999, we bring it down, times x to the 999 minus 1, which equals 999 x to the 998. And it's as simple as that. That's the power rule. So if you ever have a function that's like x to the n, then all you would do is um, bring the n down and subtract it by 1. Let's take a look at a little bit more complex example of this. So let's say we have uh, a function f of x equals x cubed uh, plus 3x squared, excuse me, 3x squared uh, minus 2x plus 1. All right, and we want to find d dx of this, or we want to find the d dx of this. So we have a compound function of many uh, polynomials. So this is a polynomial function. We have x cubed, we have an x squared, we have an x. It's a polynomial function. Now when we take the derivative, what we're going to do, we're going to look at the first term, so x cubed, and f prime, or the derivative with respect to x of f, is going to equal, bring down the 3, 3, subtract that by 1, 3x squared. That's for the first term. Now for the second term, remember we have a constant here, so just leave that out, 3, and then we take the derivative of x squared, which is going to be times 2, and then 2 minus 1, x. So 3 times the derivative of x squared, which would be 2x. And then for this one, it's going to be minus 2, and we're going to take the derivative of x times, and that will be, you bring down the 1, x to the 0, and then the last one, that's just a constant, plus 0. Alright, so this is going to be the uh, derivative, so let's just simplify that. So f prime of x is going to equal 3x squared plus 6x minus 2. So it's as simple as that. And that's how you find derivatives using the power rule for polynomial functions. Let's go on to the next rule. Alright, so now we're going to talk about the product rule. And as you can tell from this uh, title, it's going to be about products of functions. So let's see what we have. We have the derivative with respect to x of f of x times g of x. And what this is, we have two functions, f of x and g of x. And what it's going to equal is the derivative of the first function, so the derivative of f of x, times the second function, plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. So first times derivative of second plus second times derivative of first. Or anyway, since it's a sum, you can flip it around. doesn't matter. All right, let's take a look at a few examples to establish our uh, grounds with this concept. The derivative with respect to x of x cubed times x squared. And you could use the power rule for this if you combine the two, but let's just use the product rule. So let's see what we have here. We have the derivative of the first function, so x squared, which is going to be 2x times the second function, x cubed, plus the first function, x squared, times the derivative of the second. So that's going to be 3, bring down that, x squared. And what this equals 
is, let's see, we have 2x times x cubed. So that is going to be 2 times x to the fourth plus, let's see what we have here, x squared times 3x squared. That's going to equal, oops, that's going to equal 3x to the fourth. And we have 5x to the fourth. And we can use the power rule and get that same answer. x squared times x cubed is x to the fifth. Use the power rule, you'll get 5x to the fourth. Let's take a look at another one. Now this one's going to use our constant multiple rule as well. So we have 6x cubed times 7x to the fourth. And I know you can do it the same way with the product rule, I mean with the power rule, but let's use the product rule. So we have the first function, so we need to take the derivative of the first function. The first function is 6x cubed. And that would be, so, 6 times the derivative of x cubed, constant multiple rule, uh, 3x squared, uh, times the second. So that's going to be 7x to the fourth. And now we're going to add that to the derivative of the second times the first. So let's see, the first function is 6x cubed times the derivative of the second function. So we're going to make this 7 times 4x cubed. So if you sum and multiply everything out here, uh, you should get 294x to the sixth. And you can do the same method with this one where we tested to see if that was right and multiply everything out and then just use the power rule and you should get uh, the same number. All right, let's take a look at our third example. So, derivative of the first function, the first function is x to the 12th. So the derivative of that, bring the 12 down, x to the 11th, multiplied by the second function, x to the 7 halves. Now add that to the first function, x to the 12th, multiplied by the derivative of the second function. And this is going to be the same way. We're going to, since it's a fraction, it's going to work the exact same as for integers. We're going to just bring that down and then subtract this by 1. So 7 halves, x to the 5 halves. And that would be our answer. And if we were to simplify this, we would get 15.5x to the 14.5. So now we're on our last rule uh, that we're going to go over for this video. And it's called the quotient rule. And the same thing as the product rule, you can probably tell from the title. It's essentially how to find derivatives of quotients. So let's take a look at this right here. So we're going to find the derivative with respect to x of f of x divided by g of x. So we have two functions, f of x and g of x, and we're going to find the derivative of their quotient. So let's take a look at what it is. This one is probably the hardest to remember out of all of them. And uh, it's going to take some tricks to remember it. Uh, I'll tell that after I go over it. So it's going to be the second function, or the bottom function. So the bottom function times the derivative of the top function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function divided by the bottom function squared. And that may seem a bit messy at first, but there are certain ways to remember it. And the way I choose is bottom v top minus top d bottom over bottom squared. It's a nice little tongue twister that helps you, you know, memorize it. So bottom d top minus top d bottom over bottom squared. And it has a nice ring to it too. So here's our example. Now let's take a look at how to find the derivative. It's going to be the bottom. The bottom function is x squared plus 6. So it's going to be x squared plus 6 multiplied by the derivative of the top function. So the derivative of this guy. And the derivative of this guy, is, it's really simple. You're just going to use the power rule and the sum rule. And you're going to get, okay, for x squared, it's 2x. For x, it's 1. And for 2, it's going to be 0. So that end that. And then that's going to be subtracted by the first function. So that's going to be x squared plus x minus 2. Multiplied by the derivative of the bottom. And that's simply 2x, because the derivative of 6 is 0. And all of that over the bottom squared. So that'd be x squared 
plus 6 squared. Then you can go and foil everything out, multiply it out, add, subtract, and do all your trickery, and then get your final answer. But that's essentially how you get the derivative of a quotient, and this is the quotient rule. Hey guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, yeah, I know it's been a while since I posted um, the calculus video, but there it is by popular demand. But um, I'm wondering whether uh, do you guys want me to continue to use the uh, paper method where you don't see my face and I just talk and write on a piece of paper? Or do you like this whiteboard? Uh, I mean, personally, I like the whiteboard because, you know, I have more space. But um, if you guys want the paper, just write it down in the comments and then I'll switch back to the old method. But if nobody says anything, then I'm just going to continue with the whiteboard. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, probably going to be putting a new video up um, maybe like once a week. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing application of derivatives and, uh, you know, how it fits into the big picture of mathematics. Um, but, yeah, that's it. All right. Make sure to uh, favorite, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, peace.